two, scene one. Beatrice kisses, warms, and dresses Houdini in black pants, an incredibly white shirt, red tie, no top, suspenders. He is very still during this, being brought back to full life as it goes on. The ensemble surrounds Beatrice and Houdini. Song. I see a tree, half green, half burning. I see a man. I cannot see his eyes. I see a woman putting on a gold ring. I see a gold key. I see a gold key. I see fire. I see fire. It is hell. Or is it the foundation of something? Houdini stands clear, Beatrice. My mind is open. I've always wanted to believe. He puts his arm out as if to touch. But I've seen nothing, heard nothing that makes me think they can talk to us. We talk to them. We talk to the living. Further, we talk to the dead, but... Marco Baum does not want Houdini to talk like this. This is a man who breaks all constraints. He has been bolted in, riveted in, tied with wet sheets, bound in straitjackets in the hospitals. We played all the towns. The scene changes to a grove of evergreens. Beatrice and Houdini walk over the maroon colors of fallen pine needles, slant shafts of light, Three gravestones, a tall Celtic cross, and two smaller stones, one on either side. A tank town in the sticks. A walk in the country. The smell of the clover, Harry, the fresh cut grass. All right, Marco. Valanci's gone to the beauty shop. Go we'll find a massage parlor. Two minutes, boss. Marco Bone exits. They're good working alone or together. They can find out enough in two or three hours so that we can run a flawless mind reading act tonight. You help me too. Thus, you flash out of me as I came out of the ice. Beyond belief, and I know, terror and waiting for you. But I know in myself I can get through. All the escapes. Terror of what I knew you were seeing. When I had almost forgotten how to breathe. Memory, like a diagram of ice and air. There, under any ice, I remember. Thin layer of air. I lay back in the water, just under that hard ceiling, letting my lungs fill that small space. That last minute breath gave me a second chance. I could come home to you. I thought you had caught. When did you first know? On the beach, when you spoke about magic. It meant Bess and me, joined. In bed, on the stage? Yes. Help me with these stones. Volante in the beauty parlor collecting gossip, Marco in the whorehouse collecting names and intimate details, and our afternoon in the green woods. Houdini is bent over the base of the Celtic cross. What do you think this one is? A father and two children. No. Well, this is a woman with a very long life. Francis Strang. And the children? Not exactly children. Mitchell Strang, beloved husband of... and his dates. Who did he stand at the other small stone? This is beloved husband, too. What have you got? Mine is ten years later. It's their private plot, Harry. Ah, uh, we'll read their minds tonight. It's surely the grandest state of the town. And these are the people behind it. Information. Wife. They're not children. They're husbands. Bess, you think it's all escapes for me. Something holds me to you. Past, I can't say past what. But you do more than hold me. You are far and leading me. And Moses and Jesus do their transformations. It's your eyes, Harry. Your body, Harry. Yourself, what you show me. You're moving. The actual magic. <sighs> what I do can be reasoned out. I work with the sciences and the limits of the watcher. Who thinks he sees? This spruce tree in summer. At last, beyond summer. <laughs> what would happen if one woman told the truth about her life? <laughs> The world would split open. It has. Now I'm going after.
after it. All pieces. Song. I make my magic of forgotten things. Nights and nightmare and the midnight wings of childhood butterflies and the darkness is straining dark underwater and under sleep. Night and a heartbreak try to keep myself until before my eyes the morning sunlight pours and I am clear of all the chains and the magic now that rains down around me is a sunlight magic. I come to a sunlight magic. Yours. The scene flips. All right, Perry. You got her out of the circus. You said you had plans for her. Nothing has ever used what Volante has. I can use it. Who couldn't? But there's more. She can wiggle her ass, and she can use everything she's got. But there's more than that. Her questions, too. Let's take that offer from London. Oh, that'll really do it, Harry. With an escape and a disappearing woman and a show em up seance. It's best for the disappearance, isn't it? For the moment, yes. She wants it. But not for long. Look for a new one. Harry, it's not good there, is it? If I can ask. Yes, it's good. Yes, ask. It's not good in bed, Harry? That's what I think. No offense. Well. It's past anything as it happens, Marco. More than ever. But there is something. What else is there? No matter what's around, Marco, it's best. And it will always be best. And no one else. No child, I mean. You don't say anything. That's not what I'm about, Perry. I can't even see that it makes all that much difference. Or even much of any difference. It does to best. You know her little poodle? That's where it is by now. Gathered together, swinging on a trapeze. I would put it plainer than that. And your mother? I haven't told her that I really know by now. But I want to tell her. I want really to ask her. She's in it very much for you, Harry? A child. For me to go on. For her to go on. Wouldn't you adopt one? No, I don't think so. Or do you have one with somebody? Or best likewise, and say nothing, giving the child? Houdini swings on him. What does your mother say, then? I haven't told her, I said. Maybe I could write it better. Maybe when we go to Europe, I could write it to her. Or send a record and talk to her. But it doesn't make any difference between Bess and me. In fact, it may make things better. All, completely, between the two of us. Act two, scene two. He has been bolted in, riveted in, he has been laced in, tied with tar ropes and wet sheets, locked in a government mail pouch. He has been hanged upside down. And he has escaped every time. In Massachusetts once, he made his way out of a dead whale. Take a letter to Jonah. Have you seen him tossed into the harbor in a box, the tugboat standing by? Have you seen him disappear the elephant or swallow yards and yards of thread and needles? Have you seen him diving into all the rivers? I have seen something else, the man who has to escape. And I have seen them worship him. He says it to them, he breaks the handcuffs, and they know something about free. They sit there, shaking. They wait on windy street corners while he wriggles, fast, hard, and gets himself out of his constraints. Heard what Bernhard did? Sarah Bernhard. She waited for him in her car. When he came out of the water, she asked him to go for a drive. Turned to him in the car and said, Houdini, you're the only man who can do it. Give me back my leg. Among the poor and mad. 300 pairs of shoes for poor boys in a town in Scotland. He leaps from wing to wing of planes, but most with soldiers. They have been buried alive, he says. The whole stage opens to the Houdini show. At audience left, we see a part of the wings. Houdini is doing his limbering exercises and practicing contortionist contractions. Song. Today, your ambassador said, in fun, Things are tough in Washington. Let's go see what Houdini has done. With all the forms of American rape, we need a good all-purpose escape. An all-purpose good economy escape. Every president and king must be able to get out of everything. So do it and do it and do it, Houdini. 
Do, do, do it for me. His Majesty said to Houdini the Great. Just the thing for a head of state. You can have all your locks and clocks as long as I'm in the royal box. I have too much sense to investigate. Do it as long as I can see from the orchestra or the balcony. And all the princesses agree. Whatever it is you do, Houdini, do it and do it and do it for me. Except for the wildest, youngest of all princesses. And she sings rapturously. Do it and do it and do it, Houdini. Do, do, do it to me. <laughs> this is an occasion. The farewell performance of my wife, Mrs. Houdini. The phone rings. Hello? Yes, this is the Houdini show. I'm afraid I can't call them. Oh, just a minute. Bess, long distance. I'm sorry, Bess. It's very bad news. Bess enters from off stage. Yes? Yes. Harry? Is it Mother? Houdini takes the phone. This is Harry Houdini. Yes. Yes. In the middle of saying what? Did anyone else hear what she said? What did it sound like? Repeat the first part. Yes. Yes. Of course you are. He hangs up the phone. They couldn't understand what she was saying. She tried to talk to me. She was saying something for me when she died. Tell Harry. All right, Marco, pick up the whole company. We're leaving for New York tonight. All right, let's go. Let's go. He knew when the phone rang. When I lost my child, some kind of horror came to me again and again. It kept bleeding into the next place. I threw myself on seeing everything. I know. With you, Volante. You know some things. And your name begins with an M. No, it doesn't. I'm John Doe. Found in a basket in a drugstore doorway when I was four weeks old. I invented Marco Bone. And I know what you want, Volante. All I want is to stay with the show. But I begin to see you. Houdini wears black suspenders, his sign of mourning. Speaking to Beatrice. Do you think it was about me? Of course it was. Marco, if you could do anything, what would it be? <coughs> Something with you in it, baby. And the shooting gallery. Targets that nobody's ever seen. I'd do something I've never done. What's that? I don't know. Something I'd wake up with long ago. I was following something or somebody coursing over long roads. Sounds like a fox hunt. No, I hate that. But some kind of running, bodiless. You go on asking your questions. And maybe let go of Houdini. I must have that word! No! Don't comfort me. She was going to tell me. Yes? I must! What? I guess it's a matter of hope. Like anything else. I must hope. Beatrice is afraid now. Of course you must. If I knew that word, but who can find it? Who can hear? There are many ways of hearing, Harry. There are many ways of speaking, Bess. Spilling acid, for one? What do you smell? The sea. What else? Wicker furniture. My perfume. An expensive hotel room. What else? Nothing. You're too high up. And now he needs a guide, the ruler of this kingdom. Conan Doyle and Lady Doyle appear, sitting side by side, the king and queen of his side of life. Houdini is out in the whistling wind of this storm, and he knows that for him it is the kingdom of madness. All his life he has imitated seances, making the faces appear, here comes your father's spirit and your unborn child. But now he comes to the wise man and woman, and he is their child. He runs to them. It is Conan Doyle and Lady Doyle. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle can be trusted. 
He is honest beyond question. He is rational beyond question. He is the man who wrote the Sherlock Holmes stories, who created Sherlock Holmes, pure reason and deduction. And much more than that, Conan Doyle is in the great world and the afterworld. His wife is a famous medium. They have been able to reach their son. We have been able to reach our son, who was killed in the Great War. That's World War I. They called it the World War, although only a few countries were involved, like the World Series. <laughs> but many men were killed, and many families went to seances afterwards. Happiness, after you've been searching so long, our boy spoke to me, so clear, so fine, as he was in life, but only to my sight, only to sound. Houdini is a skeptic. But everything he does these days is a signal for help. We won't let that poor Mr. Houdini go searching another minute. Of course we'll help. We're in Atlantic City, and they've been sporting on the sand with our young children. They'll have their seance. He'll speak to his mother. I know it. The Houdinis again, locked in their fights. Harry, the many ways of being, the boy who spilled acid on my dress, the wild man, Borneo, the grown man. Breaking out of every conceivable bond. They're just masks, aren't they? What are you trying to do to me? You're hanging on a word from your dead mother. You greedy bitch. Bitch, I am. Greedy, I am. You want me to reach only you. Yes, I want you to reach me. Only one trick there. No trick. I prepare myself for illusions. I have to prepare myself for the real, too. What do you mean? Prepare yourself. Be there for me when I come to you. Don't fade away. Don't disappear. You come to me in the same fierce way all the time. That I could love if it were the only one way of many ways of making love. Harry, I invented the rope trick. It's been invented. No. This is the real rope trick. You look out at them in your marvelous way and go up the rope, out of sight. And I follow you and pull up the rope after me. No, the rope follows me. And what happens? What happens, Bess? We make love just out of reach, out of sight of everybody. Get off my back, Bess. You just want to get back in the act. You know who you find up in the sky at the end of that rope? Houdini. Stark mad! More than in the river. Deeper than underground when it all gave way to panic. Here comes the vast wave, Bess. This is the thing I always said drove people to madness. And I crawled to it. I rushed to it. Don't go, Harry! This once stay with me. Love me. Don't go. You could always call me back from great distances. Don't risk madness here. I am moving now, racing with the speed of darkness, and you stand still. I have seen you stand on the wings of planes! A bell rings. They are waiting for us. Houdini and Beatrice, Joan have joined the Doyles in the seance chamber. You know, I've never believed. But your mind is open. My I'm mind is open. I'm willing to believe, but I have never seen it. We are aware that you can produce with a false medium show, but we are not false. And many people can do wonders once they've been done. Look what athletes can do once the record is broken. We are not false. I know you aren't. And if this could happen, if this could really come true to me, I think my whole life would be changed. And do you have hope, dear boy? Yes, I have hope. I should like to begin. Is that agreeable to you, dear fellow? It's a relief to be with friends. Let's, by all means, go ahead. 
Houdini sits down and is finally very still. Splendid. Here are my pencils, sharp, and the paper. You may examine everything. Here, my dear, if there is writing, you understand it will not be I who writes. Sometimes there is a voice. The voice will not be mine. And no bangings, no tambourines, no spook stuff. We are here in devotion and simplicity. Yes. Will you say the final words, Arthur? Let us place our hands on the table. Almighty Lord, in whom all things are spirit, allow us to achieve the spirit. Vouchsafe us to know the communion of souls across all barriers, space, time, and death. That communion which makes us part of thee. Grant that our hearts may be answered and our search. Thy will be done. Oh, wait. Arthur, perhaps the last light out? Of course. Another wait. I'm sorry, but there does seem to be an unfavorable influence in the room. Perhaps if we could hold the seance without it, we might hope for excellent results. No one says anything or moves. I'll be in my room, Harry. Beatrice leaves. Houdini does not move. Lady Doyle's pencil suddenly beats in the table. A tremor goes through her. Houdini stands up and starts to help. No. Leave her be. Houdini subsides again and sits stone still during the seance, frozen as we have never seen him. The contact of hands has been broken, but now the pencil is touching the table for Lady Doyle. Her tremor is violent, not rhythmical, but productive. It begins to make marks in the paper. Seance music. Single notes of chromatic music is heard, related to the river music at the end of Act One. The pencil is luminous. As the writing begins, cloud shapes form in the air over the table. The pencil makes a sign of the cross on the paper before Lady Doyle. A cross? The messages begin this way. Houdini tears the paper away as she forms big letters on the sheets. Nothing is rhythmical. Thank God! I am through to you. My darling, I am with you today and always. A happiness awaits you that you dreamed of as a child. Do not grieve for the evidence you need. I am in blessed fields, grass green, silver green, blissful green. The cloud forms take the shapes of river monsters, circus people, like the Goya painting of the fates. From now on, Houdini is locked in the memory of the world under the river. And I long for you, my darling boy, to be happy. You have brought us together. We must write farewell. Did anything come through? It was marvelous. Direct communication. I am so glad. And extremely tired, if you will excuse me. Lady Doyle exits. Song. Visions, powers, dominations, fears. And the rabbi danced. And the magician sang. In all the echoes of the echoes rang down centuries of rain. Down miles of tears. The years. The making love. The belief. The years. Visions, powers, dominations, fears. I wanted to... Conan Doyle assumes all is well. We are very happy for you. I wanted to be in touch with her. It was so clear. You felt her presence in this room, didn't you? Not her voice. Not her language. She didn't use English like that. She made the sign of the cross. We change in life and afterward. She never called me darling. She knew I had bad dreams as a child. All bad dreams. I hardly slept. 
Today was her birthday. She would have mentioned that. The whole arrangement that is a person. But all your changed people, fragmented. The moon for their heads. Those are illusions that speak to us. Tricks! Technical! A minute ago, you had what you wanted. It would have meant life to me. The responsibility of accepting or rejecting is with you. It is a very real responsibility. I know it is your religion. You doubt? After what you have heard? <sighs> this is insanity. The apparitions vanished as the dean lunges for Conan Doyle's throat. A great flurry of papers. They fly up in a white snowstorm in front of a huge bullseye light. Snow in front of a locomotive. Houdini cannot attack Conan Doyle. He picks up his chair and slams it in splinters at Conan Doyle's feet. Lost. She is lost. Bess is lost to me. Jamie, who ran away with me. The locomotive killed him. The big light goes out. Use your loss. What, my what? Does Sarah Bernhardt talk to her leg? <laughs> Volante sing lullabies to her dead child? Houdini jeers Conan Doyle's other creation. Ah, Dr. Watson! I'll fight you to the end, Arthur. I'm your friend forever. You can talk to the dead, but the dead won't talk to you. Fakes! They say you're the king of fakes, Harry. I tell them I'm deceiving them. The public begs for these optical illusions. I give them entertainment. Do they see what they believe? Do they believe what they see? I'll show them up, every last one. You don't understand yourself. Understand! I chalk their hands, grew, cut their threads, grease their fraudulent trumpets. And Lady Doyle's pencil? Over me you. Cast your spell. Talk to the dead. They won't talk to you. Something's rational here, with all the rational. I'm going to Bess. Houdini and Conan Doyle leave separately in hostility. A moment of quiet. And then the real emanation appears. A witty, angular, recognizable figure in his cap, pipe and teeth. A tap dancer. You know him, and he's not Dr. Watson. Everybody, the real creation of Conan Doyle, the detective of detectives. Song. Never mind your pencil. Never mind your trance. Everything is rational. You know in advance. Goodbye, hallucination. Hello, second chance. Who done it, Houdini? Well, Mr. Holmes goes into his dance. They exit. Beatrice appears, alone. Bess of loneliness. Bess of sorrow. Bess begins to sing, pouring out her real answer to everything that has happened, melting Arya, an appeal that is something like a spiritual, a cadenza of all the old hurt and her new imperviousness, and finally, gut bucket. Her answer is profusion. Alone. And knowing how lone I am until the champagne girls emerge and sing. While he waits, I have waited too long, too long to come to song. Lord, make me strong, give me my song again. Lord, make me wise, give me my eyes again. Give me his eyes, give him his eyes, give us our eyes. What can his mother do? What can his mother say? For God's sake, Harry, live! For God's sake, Bess, what can his mother do? What kind of girl did he bring home? What kind of girl did he bring home? 
I feel, I feel he blinds himself. It's human, but that makes him unreal. Mama, I got a deathly man. Make him part of my life. Mama, I want my magic man. So I can be a woman. Be a woman. Be a wife. Be a woman. Be a woman. And then, then, be a wife. Entire company, Andrew. Be a woman. Be a woman. Be a wife. Mama, I, I want my magic man so I can be a woman. woman. Be, be a woman. Be a wife. All exit. But, Volante and Marco Bo. So I found my new vocation. The high wire dancer, stripper, body fortune teller. She finds she has something else than Sherlock Holmes. All right, beautiful. Just the announcements. There's more to it than that. Everything you do is an announcement. Act two, scene three. Marco Bove on one side of the stage, Volante on the other. He fought for the word from his mother. He met false hope. He fought false hope. This man is not Galileo, no Einstein, no Freud. This man is a lockbreaker, name of Houdini. Houdini escapes every time. <laughs> but he didn't pick the lock of that last door. He broke the door down. And now, escape is an empty lock behind him. He needs to find. And you know what happens then. You just may get yourself invited to Washington. It can happen. Sometimes in your own bedroom, watching the news. This time, it's a more formal invitation to a more formal place. Houdini, you know the ropes. Come and testify. Houdini enters with Beatrice. Well, sure. There's no rush in there. And give me a few pointers. I've never been in a courtroom. He's, He's never, never been, been in a courtroom. courtroom. There's no risk. He's not on trial. There's always the risk, not just at trials. The man can call you on the carpet. Questions can pour under the door. And this is a hearing, a congressional hearing. On magic, fortune telling. Same difference. Still willing to testify? Well, of course. My whole life's been leading to this. I don't see that at all. There's a bill. What's the bill? One team is trying to pass a law against fortune telling. No fortune telling? Why should he do magic and me not do fortune? He ain't sabe. No capiche. Ishkabibble. <laughs> Don't worry, darling. I'm not on trial. Well, they've actually to come in now. A small boy begins in. They get in somehow. The boy reminds of Houdini at 12. Mr. Houdini, can I have a quarter? Sure. Here. I'll show you something. Bin, bam, boozle. He hands the boy a coin. You try. No. See it? Now faster. Don't watch the coin. Watch the fingers. Bin, bam, boozle. Got it? Got it. That's better than just a quarter, eh? You can make. His hand in the boy's head. The hearing chamber. It has a resemblance to the shipping gallery at Coney Island. This is the bill, 8989. It's against anybody telling fortunes for money, or being paid for card tricks and con games, or pretending to remove spells. He or she shall be considered a thief and a blackmailer, and shall be punished. No fortune telling in the White House. <laughs> Beatrice sitting behind to me. But how could your profession come into this? I don't know, but if it is... I swear, Harry, if you... You'll leave me? Houdini kisses the best. This hearing is convened. I would like to call Mr. Houdini to make a statement as a key witness. May I inquire who he is? Call Houdini. Mr. Chairman, this is my bill. I move that Houdini be heard. Houdini takes the stand. What is your full name? Harry Houdini. The original Houdini was a Hindu, wasn't he? Answer yes or no. No. Are you Houdini the second? No. Are you the original Houdini? You're thinking of Houdin, the Frenchman that I took my name from. Took something from a Frenchman? I thought he lived in Al Bahad. Are you joking? No, I am in earnest. His name was Robert Houdin. He was a trick master, and I exposed him in a book I've written. 
exposed your ancestor? Rip the clothes off his granddaddy. Just answer yes or no. My name is Houdini. And your real name? My real name is Harry Houdini, by the law of the United States many years ago. Wasn't your original name Weiss? I was born under that name. Have you ever been to Al-Bahai? Never in my life. Have you read the Arabian Nights stories? Yes, sir. But you've never been there. Were both of your parents Jewish? Yes, they were. You're against the resurrection, aren't you? Isn't that why you're against mediums? I'm not attacking religion. I respect any genuine believer in any religion. But this thing they call spiritualism, talking with the dead, is a fraud. I've not seen one genuine medium, and it's an American art, you know. We started it. We're responsible. You've been fighting them, Mr. Houdini. Are you successful? More mediums have been arrested through me in the last two years than in the 70 before. Mr. Houdini's run and work! I'm not a gypsy queen. I'm the science of the future. He's trying to destroy others, and Houdini is destroying himself. Mr. Houdini has placed so many people mentally in the asylum that his thought might return to him and place him there. No, I have walked through that. It's part of me now. I believe in Santa Claus. No disrespect in the press. Is it true, Mr. Houdini, that you are the head of a secret organization? The Society of American Magicians. Only secret about our exploits. What is your business? I'm a writer. I'm a psychic investigator, and I perform stage illusions. You don't claim special powers. No, sir. I am human. Conan Doyle says he has supernatural powers. What do you say to that? I deny it. Can you prove it? I admit that I am human. But Conan Doyle is one of the greatest authorities. No, sir, he is a dupe. He believes what he wants to believe. I have heard you can fly through keyholes. Many people will tell you they see whatever I've wanted them to see. They're not able to describe what has happened. They'll accept what you seem to show them if they don't know the laws of science or the laws of belief. True belief is a great thing. I care about that. My father wrote a book. Is Mr. Houdini a mystic? Mr. Houdini is one of the greatest mystics in the world! You say it's just magic. Yes. Simply have not explained some of it. Not to anyone. Not to my dearest friends. Does this hearing apply to spiritualism? Under the guise of spiritualism, they tell fortunes. There's a large head coming towards me. I see a woman scolding a child. Shame, shame. The child is covering his eyes. That's their way of telling things. It's a way we recognize. That's the way we tell our dreams, in the present. But that's the continual present of creation. Now these people, in many towns, they get the woman alone and put their hands all over their bodies. They tell you how to win back your lover. They tell you about love. And they do it under the cloak of religion. Are you attacking religion? Answer yes or no. No. Are you attacking lovers? Are you attacking bodies? No. I speak through the body. <laughs> In a great medical school, three students late at night are going over the long lists of the parts of the body. They are going through their long exercises as if they were acrobats in training, concentrating, putting themselves through their long, painful hours. Not so painful, they have their own ideas about what the body is. The scene changes. Room in a medical school. Three medical students, starkly differentiated by hair color and dress. There are three actors of the three act clown actors of the circus scene. The first medical student slams down a huge anatomy book and throws it. God! I can't. I can't get me straight. I can't even see straight. Can't what? It's this goddamn memorization. I can't do the cranial nerves. The facial nerves? Optic, olfactory, oculomotor. What comes next? Get a grip. Morose half dead. Morose? I'm in some dream. Medical students. I'm asleep with all the lights on, and this word drilling, that can't be the body. What I saw in that lab today, 
a cadaver with the top of the skull lifted out, a tear rolling out of her eye, and these nerves, optic, olfactory, then what? How can I draw with you yammering? Here, you know how to remember those nerves? On old Olympus, towering tops, a Finn and German picked some hops. What the hell are you saying? <laughs> it's the initials, fool. On old Olympus, optic, olfactory, ocular motor, towering tops, trochlear, trigeminal, a Finn and German, abducens, facial, acoustic, glossal pharyngeal, pick some hops. Pneumogastric, spinal, hypoglossal. That's beer. That's what I want for a chaser. God, I want a boiler beer. <laughs> On old Olympus's optic, factory, ocular motor. O ocular motor? That's what it takes in this portrait. Look, it's the way Houdini holds his eyes wide, hypnotizing you. I did this from a newspaper picture. He says he'll sit for me when he's here. That's not the verse. That's kid stuff. Let's see the picture. The student looks at the picture. Who's Houdini? He's playing the next stage show at the Bijou. Oh, the clown. He's not a clown. He's a magician. A, a magus. What do you mean, kid stuff? Well, what we say is... No, I really don't know. <laughs> oh, 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 to touch and feel a girl's vagina and hind. Oh, 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 to touch and feel... I'd rather find a woman and get drunk! How can it be vagina and hind if the other rhyme says pick some hop? Well, it's Vegas, accessory, hypoglossal, like your Vegas Vegas, and you can remember them that way, can't you? Oh, 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 to touch and feel a girl's vagina and hymen. You won't ever forget that. God, I need a woman. <laughs> I should have never broken with my girl, but what else was there to do? Let's go out, for God's sake. Aren't you coming? I want to take this drawing further. I can't seem to get that look of his into it. Ah, uh, let it go till you see him. Let's get out of this charnel house. Why do you call Houdini a clown? What are you? Well, a, a monkey dressed up. Hocus pocus kiss my tuchus. We're going to heal people. What the hell? You know those nerves now, don't you? Come on, on the town. You know enough not to let yourself rot in this nightmare with the lights on. The three medical students slash clowns exit. At the hearing in Washington, Houdini says he is not attacking bodies. I am attacking fraud. These mediums, they drive people to madness, to the hospitals. They call on survivors to join their loved ones. After they've made their wills in favor of the mediums, they're driven to suicide. You deny a boy and a girl at a fair a little fun? A little heroin, a little opium. Just enough to make him happy. Can you show us a test of any of this? I'll make you an offer. $10,000 to anyone who can read my mind. Silence. What did my mother call me as a child? Silence. Who taught me the rope trick? Silence. Houdini takes a piece of paper, crumples it, throws it on the floor. Read that! Any of you, show me up! All right, another challenge. Anybody, come up and hit me as hard as you want. A man comes forward, socks him. Houdini is braced and takes it smiling. That's not the mind. The body is part of the mind. That offer stands. He's a fake! Sent for Gretton! He knew him when! Gretton can't come. Who's he? The circus man? Just show up Houdini. He's got to come if he's called. He can't. He 
got his lion, and the lion tore the poor guy's arm off. In this business, you're bound to lose something. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know sorrow, Houdini? Haven't you ever wanted consolation? Answer yes or no. Yes. Call Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. He doesn't have to appear. He wants to. Conan Doyle takes the stand. Yes. He has powers greater than human powers. I swear I don't. I don't even know how you got out of that diving suit. Everything was by ordinary means. The whole thing beats me completely. Help me stand up against this corrupt and fraudulent thing. I know you want to do that, Harry, but help the mediums. You're asking me to do the impossible. Yes, but you do the impossible. I admit that I do not. The gentleman's time has expired. May I call my investigators? You may call your first witness. Mouth. Nose. Anus. Eyes. He says he's here to stop thieves. <laughs> He calls Volante, the high bar artist who asked all those questions. They used her body, and there was plenty more all unused. Now, she's Houdini's best detective. Ask him why. She has gone among the mediums, into their dark rooms, and she knows their shabby tricks. She's my right-hand woman, and a crack detective. I am here because I consider it my duty. We have laws against cholera, yellow fever, and smallpox. Why are there no laws against the contamination by which frauds have bamboozled prominent politicians and scientists? Which is an easy thing to do. Thank you, Volante. <laughs> How is it easy? They are gentlemen, sir. They come to a seance. They will not touch a medium when she comes dressed as a man or a man dressed as a woman. Their theories in their mind, they will not touch anything. How are you going to find out anything if you don't touch it? Isn't that so, Harry? She's my best detective. I feel for the truth. The audience responds. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What holds back the body will confine the mind. How can you prove that you don't have those powers? Oh, come on. I go through a keyhole? They claim you dematerialize your body, ooze through, and put yourself together again. How do you do it? I can take hold of the rational and irrational. I can use my one gift. I can speak out against lies like anybody else. We are all born alike. I don't follow this. It's all a plot of the Jews. He wrote a letter to the Pope. I saw a copy. Maybe he's secretly Catholic. I don't think this is good for your career, Harry, or your marriage. You willing to testify, Marco? Sure, but don't be self-destructive. Protecting the magician now and forever. Protecting him from himself is what I'm for. What are you for, honey? Song. I love using what I've got. Love not being what I'm not. After a long time of one kind of living, and it was all right, it really was partly good. Full of one-sided things, and distrusting, and absorbing, almost every day. But then, a new life came along, bringing the joy of reaching, of stretching, of being effective. This is another place. This is another way. The ecstasy of a woman detective. And what I detect, what I really find, is your body, and mind, and your life, and my life, and my body, and mind. The joy of being a detective. The joy of thinking new, like being unbelievably bare. Finding something of myself that has never been aware. The ecstasy of feeling for what's there. Those targets are really moving. You can detect. You can expose. Can you duplicate? That's for me to know and you to find out. Houdini calls Marco Bone to testify. You've known me for all your professional life. In the jails, under the ice, in the with the circuses, where I ran my seances myself in the tank tanks. All fits. I heard the newsboys yell that you died in the river. I saw you when the phone rang. Anybody can tell fortunes, but... And, in your opinion, you do things I cannot understand. You have a gift and you make your gift to us. Maybe you don't understand it yourself. This is a great man. Oh, oh I knew oh, he was oh, lying oh, to oh, us! Thanks. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Any further disturbance and I'll clear the chamber! He performs extraordinary escapes. He can talk to the dead. He calls it duplicating, but I say it's supernatural. He just 
does it. It's a form of saying it to us. He can mystify the wisest judge and the believing child. I have seen their eyes. Marco, I'm trying to tell the truth. Well, this isn't a trial. I'm telling what I see. Have him up on trial. Open your eyes, Harry. Admit everything. They want to hear it. Marco Bone steps down from the witness chair. Marco, what have you done? He's a, he's a magician. Why should he turn and face them? The American hero as an escape artist, he has escaped escape. No, he's just standing, speaking for what he is. You know, they'll probably put me away. You cut through everything. Your loyal neck and your damn fool chin. I'll wait for you, Marco. Well, what do you do? Say you watch a bullfighter. You're fascinated. You're the bull. You stare. You hardly move your eyes. All those wounds in your back. All you see is a huge red cape. An enormous red area opens up in the back curtain. And a point of light. An intense spot of light appears beside the red. But that is the sword point that will kill you. The spectators crowd him in continual sinister movements. Stand back, please, you photographers! Will you stand back? I'm back at the shooting gallery. Volante goes on hunting. Who is she after? Read your newspaper. Do you attack faith? Our emotions are part of our bodies and ourselves. How do you juggle? How do you escape? I don't call it religion. Here, here's a trumpet. Houdini hands a trumpet to Varric. Say, hello, kind spirit. I don't hear anything. You must have faith. That's what they say. Now I hear something. Oh, for God's sake! Merrick, laughing, throws the trumpet down. An old woman comes forward, some reminder of Cecilia. Did you destroy yourself, Houdini? My dead do live. They are in my life. Each day speaks. I don't talk about communication anymore. Thank you. He's crazy! He's brutal. He torments his wife. He's unspeakable. A great roar of voices, music. My character is under attack. My last witness, Mrs. Houdini. Beatrice takes the stand. Houdini acts as questioner. It becomes personal now, completely. Step this way, Mrs. Houdini. They say I hypnotize you, that I'm vile to you. Chains appear in the air. Have I ever been crazy, unless it was about you? No. Same Houdini. He's a fake. He's insane. Get him! He's against vision! Wow! Butcher! Whip! The transformation took place in a storm of light. Not in a dark, filthy room with hands broken for you, for money. Houdini shakes off the chains, his accusers, stands there at the beginning of a new phase. Ask him about the chains. Ask him about the jail. You know that burial plot? You know that paper she signed? Suppose it doesn't work out like that. Beatrice and Houdini embrace. None of these attacks reach them, now that he has made his stand and stopped escaping. None of it can touch you, now that you make your stand. Change of scene. Now, the three medical students are walking down the avenue in the rain. The rainy lights. They are very near the theater where Houdini is. A piece of apparatus has fallen on his ankle. The bone is cracked. He is in pain. A theater. Houdini's dressing room. Houdini and Bess. Houdini is lying on the couch, his trouser leg pulled up. Bess is massaging his ankle. Your fine ankle, Harry. Like a racehorse. Here? Your hands are marvelous. It's broken. Don't do the show. Come on, it's almost healed. A crack, anyway. Bess massages the ankle in silence. Now she bandages it again. Sometimes I think that dog's my child, Harry. Sometimes I think what Mother was going to say to me was, be your own child. How can that be? You know, whenever I come to this river, I see you beneath the ice. And what do you do? I knock at the door. You're not expecting anyone? Just a minute. The young fellow with the drawing. Houdini pulls down his trouser leg. 
Bess goes to the door and opens it to the three medical students. This isn't a good time for you. Of course it is. Come in, and your friends. The three medical students enter. Uh, thank you for your kindness. I, I just thought the eyes. He shows the portrait to Beatrice. The portrait appears in the back wall. I can see. Yes, perhaps the eyes. And Houdini will rest. The statement and portrait bring Houdini to his feet. Five minutes, and then I dress for my act. You have the most extraordinary eyes I've ever seen. Is that how you hypnotize them? The reaches of being? That what you care about? I'm those reaches. Sleeping with the lights on. Memorizing those nerves. <sighs> those nerves. But those are marvelous times. When you come to the end of exhaustion and walk out the other side. Swim out the other side. When you come to the end of belief and disbelief and find yourself in a place where everything is lit with a different light. Touch something beyond touch. But all you have to do is entertain them. No, he's a different fish altogether. Draw those eyes, Tony. Sharpened on darkness with his wife there all the time. And bed with him every day and every night. <laughs> and the discipline, too, all your life long. We train for epidemics, staying awake for five days. And you? Another town, another hotel. No, he's challenged everybody. I've seen those challenges. Fake me someone. Hit me anyone, anytime. In a burst that parallels her burst at the end of Act One. He's the man on fire who walks out alive. He's the writer of the Death Comet. He held out against them in the hearing, called them fraud when they tried to take his profession away from him by chopping him down with attacks and slobbering hate. Stood against them when they called him mystic. Although I don't know, I, I don't know. He's a cascade of powers. Bess sees him staring at her. He is finally filled with her praise, something in him being spoken that had never been reached before. They don't know. They don't know these boys like memory machines. How could they know your fighting, diving body and your life full of power, full of sex, full of belief? Raoul Houdini is fixed, and what Bess is doing, he is hit. Full force in the stomach by the third medical student. The first blow is to the solar plexus. What do you want us to believe? Three sharp blows. Houdini collapses on the couch. The other two students pull the third away. Men burst in. The students leave. I'm all right. That's the whole thing is turning. Spin of color and music. Another dressing room. Give her some champagne. Volante is with Beatrice pouring a drink. Marco Bone guards the door. No, not for me. I'm at another lock. The doctor's just outside, Harry. There's no cure. I'll walk out of this one. Whether the lock gives or not. Stay, Harry, a little longer. Bess, I want to promise you something. I'll come back to you. I'll make a way. I'll come back. I'll bring your audience, Harry. I'll be there. But for myself, I won't try to come back. Pain. Fire. <laughs> Promises. He dies. They crowd around. He's gone. Dead. Disappeared. Illuminated man. I'm back at the shooting gallery. Volante goes on hunting. Who is she after? Read your newspaper. The law against fortune tellers? Of course, it did not go through. Tell your fortune, ladies and gentlemen. What are all his escapes for? What did he make his stand for? Go further, you say? Does Houdini go further? 
breaking up forever? Beatrice waits for the word from Harry. Beatrice comes out of her destruction to concentrate on getting Lavini's message, breaking, waiting, almost as she was when she waited for him to come out of the river. But something does come, a message in the form of a song. Let me see. Let me feel. Let me know what is real. Let me believe. Houdini sings as when he spilled the acid. Music and colors surround Beatrice. Snatches of song music roar past river music. Long pink flashes going blue, green, and black at last. Beatrice drinks. The voices deny. False. She told me about that song last week. Sure, I passed it on. Listen, she gave an interview six months ago and told about, let me see, let me feel. I saw it in print. If you believe that, you'll believe anything. It didn't even sound like his voice. There is singing, crowing, laughing, a chaos of noise. Houdini steps out of the blackness to the point closest to the audience. Incredible. But I believe the incredible. Swallowing anything, eat the inedible, convince Missouri, bamboozle the Dutch, and I make, I make, by touch, by touch, great touch, by which we do all things, even our imaginings, even numbers, even words. They touched me, we have heard. That's, you know, they opened me. Open yourself, for we are locks. Open each other, we are keys. Then, if you are touched by these, our people who reached out to you, touch yourself and your neighbor, too. Make. I touch as man made you. Touch yourself as I touch myself. Touching man and woman too.